One of the most significant features that we've added in version 14 of PLS CAD is the XY structures. This allows the ability to locate structures purely based on their XY coordinates as opposed to having to have a predefined center line or alignment and, and uh, spotting your structures that way. To demonstrate this, I'm going to start with a project. We went and pulled in some terrain data from the internet. Uh, there's many places to get that. We've got some tech notes on our website that talk about that. I also used our web mapping services, or WMS capabilities, to pull in aerial uh, photography directly into PLS CAD of our area. Uh, we have a video that explains how that works if you'd like to look at that. I'm going to come in here by starting to add some structures at these predefined survey points that we pulled in as well. Uh, since I don't have an alignment, I just need to click on the point. And I can say Add XY Structure right here. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go grab a standard dead-end uh, VC 5.21 three-phase dead-end. I'm getting this from our RUS uh, library of structures, all the RUS poles we've already predefined and pre-modeled ready to go uh, to use. So I'm going to grab that dead end there, uh, OK. And of course, I'm going to do the next uh, uh, tangent structure here. That'd be a VC1.11. Uh, uh, you can look at the picture to see if that's what you want to add. Before we do that, I'll say yes. And uh, let me go ahead and do the one at the end down here. So I'm going to say add an XY structure. Let's add our dead end again. That'll be another VC5.21 dot pole, that framing, standard RUS framing. And so we've got those three poles here. Now I could add the other two in the middle here just like I did already, but to demonstrate another capability, let's say that we want to put some poles that are lie on an alignment between tangent structure, the second one, and the dead end one, the last one that I added. I can simply click on the structure, and there's a function that says add an XY structure along the line. And click on that. It's what line do you want to do it? I'm going to go ahead and go to that dead end that I just added. I'm going to click on that one. And now as I move my mouse backwards and forth, you can see that it adds it. Not only does it add it, but it also gives me the stationing that I'm going here. So I'm going to add that pole right there. Uh, and I'm going to add another tangent. That'd be the VC1.11. Open. And uh, add another one here. I know that's not the exact spot, but I'm just demonstrating how this uh, alignment option works. Open. And we've now added those poles along that alignment. Now, that's not exactly right, so I'm going to use the structures move on function here to correct that. And I'm going to take this structure and snap it right to that survey point. I'm going to take this structure and snap it right to that survey point. So using XY, we haven't had to do any alignments or anything like that. I just used XY structure capabilities. <clears throat> and we've added those five structures along that alignment. <clears throat> now I'm going to quickly string some wire here, sections add graphical. And I'm just going to graphical add. As I'm doing this, we have another video that explains how to do the 3D stringing of the add graphical. So feel free to look at that if you want more in-depth help on that. Uh, I am going to go ahead and string a sparrow. This was a 25 kV line here. We're going to display it at 120 degrees Fahrenheit operating condition. I won't get into the details on that, but you can see that our wires are now added. Now let's just uh, say that we wanted to do a service drop um, on structure number four over to the house over here. Well, before I can do that, I need to switch out that structure. So I'm going to do a structures modify on number four. Instead of a standard tangent, I'm going to go grab a tangent with a transformer and a service drop uh, uh, to the side of it. So I'm going to say open on that one and um, say OK and OK. And we'll see that we now have a structure with a transformer on there. I'll zoom in just a little bit. And now I want to come in here and add the uh, service over to this house. I'm going to use that inline capability. If I were to click on the base of the pole, I can say add structure along line. Now if I do this, See how it's snapping here? That's because by default, we're snapping to survey points, and those are all the terrain points. If you want to freehand this, if you click on any survey point, there's an option that says change the snap settings. If I click on that, by default, we're using the survey points. I'm going to say I don't want to do survey points. You can see a bunch of settings in here that you could snap to freehand. I'm just going to freehand it, what I see on the screen. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to say, Click on the base of that pole. I'm going to say add a structure along the line. 
and we come over here right to the side of the house where the service drive might might be at. And now I'm going to add my pole outside the house, and I'm going to do a VC1, um, VA5, excuse me, VA5.1 pole. And now we can see that we've added that pole right there. And just to complete the process now, I'm going to do a sections, add graphical, and uh, we'll string our service drop over to the pole over here. And uh, I'll leave all the defaults, uh, uh, maybe a different wire, but in this example, we'll just use a default wire there. So you can see how we've added that service drop. Now, there is another function that might be helpful in this case. Let's say we kind of made a mistake on that pole location. Uh, you can click on the base of the pole. You can say, move structure along a line. Maybe the service was over here on this side of the yard. So I'm going to come over here and just make an alignment freehand again. And when I do that, Notice that I can grab that pole and put it anywhere along that line. So maybe it's actually over here, and we'll see that pole snap in right there. Okay, so that's how we can quickly get structures in here. A few more things we might want to do here. Um, if you will notice, by default, we put all the structures in at a certain orientation. So if I zoom in here, we can see that this is not lined up exactly correctly. We have two ways to correct this. If you do know the azimuth of all your poles, if that's been taken care of in your surveys, you can simply do a structure modify. And in this case, this structure would have to be rotated 45 degrees. That rotates the entire structure, the cross arms and the guy and everything, and that would get that in line. Now, it's beyond the scope of this uh, video here, but there's also the capability under structures, customized structure, where you can actually move a guy anchor. You can move it in line with the wire. There's even a freehand option, so you could freehand drop that wire wherever you want. Uh, you can also move an arm. You can move the arm perpendicular to a wire. So using these tools, you could come in and customize this structure uh, to make the exact site-specific application for every one of the poles that you're doing. The other thing that I see here, because I rotate the structure and everything else, I've got some wires crossing in the middle here. And I'm going to use a simple function of sections. It's called swap attachments. And I'm just going to say, oh, take that outside phase and put it over here. And you'll see the wires switch around. And now they are designed correctly going through there. To further demonstrate some capabilities with XY structures, I'm going to open up Google Earth here. And when we do that, we can. I've already zoomed into a location where we've got a couple of poles. And I just wanted to illustrate that in Google Earth, you can add a place mark. And so maybe I would call this pole, uh, just to illustrate that point. Maybe I'll come over here and click right there and say add uh, street light. And that's not where I meant. I meant for that street light to be right there. Uh, so you get the idea how you can add poles and street lights. Now this, uh, uh, what we've done here is this is a project where somebody had actually already surveyed uh, the poles or had them in their GIS system. And so you can see all the poles uh, have been located uh, for this particular area. And so uh, illustrating this in Google Earth, uh, that's those locations there. Uh, if you right click on here, you can save this place as a KMZ location. So you can save that KMZ location out of Google Earth, whether it be something that you've done as I did just by dropping stick pins, or whether it be using a, a GIS application to get these locations. Once you have that KMZ, I'm going to go back into our uh, project here, and I am going to do a structures remove range um, and basically blow away all the structures that we already had there. And what I want to do here now is I want to add in all those survey points in the KMZ. So I'm going to go to Terrain, Edit, uh, Merge Points. And I'm going to say Merge in from a KML KMZ. A KMZ is a zipped KML. So KML, KMZ, either one of them will work directly in PLS CAD. If I open that up, it says, OK, what structure do we want to use? And um, I used the structure locations for this exercise here. So I'm going to open that up. Uh, here's a little trick. You can assign a feature code. So if you have your standard feature code listing, you can pick that. I'm pick something simple here. Structure 10 is a structure, uh, feature code 10. And then here's a, a second part of our trick. Uh, we can pick the, any name 
uh, in the plan comment. So in that particular survey in Google Earth, the uh, company had actually taken each structure's um, uh, number, uh, each number, each structure had its own numbering system, uh, 14714DP19 or whatever. So all those numbers were, came from that company. And I'm going to pull that in as a plan comment. So if I do an OK on there, we have all those points coming in there. And uh, the, the thing to point out, though, the KMZs are all down at zero. Uh, if I were to rotate this around, uh, all those points are down at zero. So there's a function underneath terrain 10 that's going to take those points. Uh, uh, Google Earth is all at zero. And I'm going to pull those up to our surface here. And when I do that, I'll say yes. So 61 poles in this example were all pulled up to the surface, and there's all of our poles. So that all came in just from using the Google Earth. Now that we have our structures located um, and the names, let me zoom in on an area here so you see them. So here's a name of some of these poles here. Maybe kind of hard to see, 14714DP19, probably the same one I was looking at in Google Earth. If I do this now, there's a function here called Structures, Automatic Spotting, spot at feature codes. Now before I do this, there's an important uh, option that you need to do. You need to go to File Preferences and make sure that your structure directory is pointing to the folder that where you've already predefined all your structures. I was looking at the RUS structures earlier, so that's where I was. I'm now going to go up to PLS, PLS CAD, Examples, Projects, Distribution, 3D Stringing, and finally Structures. And that's the folder that all my structures uh, that were pre-designed uh, uh, for this particular project. Again, it could be uh, uh, those structures can be designed using many different ways. Uh, there's lots of surveying capabilities that can uh, do that. You can even take a picture of the structure with your iPhone and model a structure from the picture. That'll be the subject of a different tech note and video in the near future. Once you have that pointed there, then we can simply go in and structures, automatic spotting, spot at feature codes. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, spot structures at feature code 10, if you remember. So we're going to say spot structures at every feature code number 10 in our project. And we're going to say, what's the name of the structure? I'm going to say from the plan comment. So we're going to put 14714DP19.pol at that location. And we're going to do that for all 61 structure locations. So when I click OK, we'll see that we have 61 structures have been spotted at these x, y coordinates. And if we were to rotate this around in 3D view a little bit, uh, you start seeing how all the structures have been spotted on our project here. So that's XY structures. Uh, I do want to point out that you can go to structures, staking table. Those coordinates are available right here. So you can uh, modify them or you can even type them in uh, from the beginning. If you had a new structure at a specific coordinate, you could just come in and type in the information in this table if that's something that you prefer. You could even use a copy and paste from a spreadsheet or something if you had the coordinates of all your structures. Lots of different ways to use this, but the, uh, the most important concept to take away from this is that you don't need to have an alignment. We did this entire project without a single alignment. Uh, all the structures have been located purely by XY. Uh, graphical stringing strung all the wires in. So you can see how it could be very easy to model up an entire distribution system uh, correctly and uh, actually do the correct analysis for all your uh, storm hardening and joint use applications. This is much more accurate than doing just a single pole analysis of each individual pole down throughout the whole project. If you'd like to learn more information about our software, you can see our website at www.powline.com. If you'd like some information about our software, you can contact us directly at info at powline.com. And finally, if you would like to purchase our software, you can contact our sales team directly at sales at powline.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon.